G'day, Shah here once again with Full Wheels on the Road, helping you get the most out of your time away. I've had a lot of requests across my various social media platforms to do a bit of a Garmin Overlander for Dummies video. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a quick look at the unit from plugging it in, powering it on, and just doing a couple of very basic navigation tasks. So let's go check it out. All right, so to start things off, getting the unit out of the box. I've actually featured in a previous video the way I've got my unit plugged in to Maggie here. I'll put a link up in the top uh, right hand side of your screen if you want to take a look at it. But it's just a 12 volt cigarette socket and a base station here that you'll see that it fits onto. So piece of cake. You'll see on the back of the unit here, little magnetic base and a little power mount. So Charging it up is as simple as that. Turning the unit on is really simple. Just one button on the side, a little bit of a uh, warning thing. Don't use the device while you're driving, etc. Agree. And you're in business. It's switched on and ready to go. Simple as that. All right, so there's a couple of different ways I could explain the unit, but I've chosen to do it in a particular way which isn't going driving straight away for a couple of reasons just so you know how to set the unit up when you initially get it if you were thinking of getting it and also that lets you know just how easy it is to actually connect the unit to external sources to update it and set it up initially now there's a few different ways that I could give you a bit of a rundown on how this thing actually works but I'm going to go through it just sort of letting you know what's on your main screen here to start with so we're just starting now by swiping to the left that's giving you all your details. You've got an altimeter, a barometer, your uh, compass setting. You can also start a track from here, which we'll look at in a little bit, and also calibrate for full driving. So if you can know how you're looking in terms of uh, how many degrees over you are. Back to the main screen, swiping down from the top. I can actually swipe down twice if I want to take a look at my connectivity. So if I'm at home setting up the unit itself, you can just connect via Wi-Fi. So pretty simple. One of the things I will recommend doing with this particular unit is updating it very, very regularly. It's a really simple thing to do if you want to actually do that. All you need to do is just take it off the magnetic mount in your vehicle, take it inside. Now you can also sync via USB as well. And that is really simple. Plug it in via the USB ports on the side here. You'll also notice at this stage here that there's a memory card there as well. I don't have it installed because I don't need it because this thing's got a heap of space. But it's another option that's available for you. So keep the unit updated as regularly as you possibly can just, just to keep up to date with maps and changes in roads being closed or open, that sort of thing. And just also software updates to keep the unit updated itself. You've got a whole heap of icons here which may look a little bit confusing but we'll go through what is going to be mainly used for you when you're just wanting to take a look at the unit to start with. First thing there I'm going to get is click on the gear icon. Now that's taking me to all of my settings. So if you're setting date and time, location, uh, setting up Wi-Fi networks etc that is where you'll do it from there. You can also take a look at your memory space here and how much memory you currently have and what's left. That sort of thing so I've only used 0.99 of a gig and I've got a ton of maps on there so you know I've still got over half of over the half of the space left so tons and tons of space on this thing even without plugging in the memory card now we haven't even looked at navigation as yet but we'll take a look at that in a minute what we want to do is just take a look at the basic unit now one thing that you wouldn't notice what I did there is hit that circle down the bottom of the screen that's taking me back to the main screen. So no matter what screen I'm on, I can get straight back to there, swipe up, hit the circle, takes me back to the main screen. Again, we still haven't even looked at navigating. We're just taking a look at the basic unit. Now notice what I've done there is I've tapped the little red square down the bottom right hand side of the screen. That's just to bring up all of the recently used apps, similar to what you do on a phone and then you just swipe them to the left and you're back to the main screen. All right, 
So now, in drive mode, which is where you'll be using the thing most of the time, and this is what 99% of people are gonna to wanna to be using the unit for. It's pretty damn simple to find. To get to drive mode, all you just do is hit that drive button on the left, and there you are, ready to go. Now, from here, there's a few different ways that you can get to a place that you wanna go. I'll run through them separately. The first of which is by hitting the little eyeglass icon here. Now this will give you a whole host of different ways to get to where you wanna go. You can go via address, you can go via recent places that you've been to, you can go for, through HEMA places, TripAdvisor, that sort of thing. And you can also set yourself up a go home, which is what I've done. I've set myself up a home address. And what it's done is it's immediately given me some details on how to get to home. Now, one, one of the things you would have noticed on the right hand side of the screen here is it's given me a turn by turn details on the right. And you'll also notice that that just automatically reduced. So there's a couple of different things you can do from this point on. If you want to actually have that turn by turn navigation permanently on the right hand side of the screen, what I can do is a couple of different things. I can go turns, that'll bring my turns up and each of these menus as you want to close them you just hit the little cross down the bottom and if you want to bring up various other different information Traffic is one of them. You can also bring up up ahead. So that's giving me rest areas, uh, service stations, different stores, that sort of thing. And you'll notice permanently down the bottom here, it's got how long it'll take to get to your destination as well. If you were recording your trip data, which I'm not at this stage, we'll take a look at that later on but this is where your current trip data will be. You've got a moving average speed, how long you've been moving for, and how many kilometers you've done, etc. as well. So you've got a host of different options for the data that you can take a look at while you're driving. Pitch and roll is another, which we said we'll take a look at later on. All right, so that's just a basic navigation and what we've done to search where we were is go by the, the eyeglass. And what I'm gonna do now is go back to the home screen. 